Okay guys, um, just left Harley Davidson, uh, Green Harley Davidson in Green, Texas. Um, they're the shop that I have chosen to do the uh, upgrade, the build out on the engine for Jade Shadow. Um, I'm gonna have all the footage here in just a moment. Um, but man, I got tongue tied. I'm just gonna let you know up front. There's a couple things that I wanted to say and they just didn't come out right. Um, so I, I was a little descriptive. You'll see it in the video. Um, give me a break on it. I do appreciate it. It's It's been a long couple days. Uh, that being said, I got a lot of really good information, um, some great ideas, and I can't wait to get the estimate sent over um, and get the parts ordered. So just as you'll see in the video, our time frame, about a week and a half, we'll do the purchase, order the parts. Uh, parts are going to take up to 90 days from all the different sources. And then once all the parts are in and we turn the bike over, we're looking at maybe three or four days to get the bike bike back. <coughs> Excuse me, non-COVID cough. I just have allergies. Um, but it's going to be an exciting process. We're going to be making other videos um, during this time. So um, come along for the journey. I look forward to uh, you seeing what we're going to do. Let's get into it. Well, I want to say a special thanks to the team over at Green Harley Davidson for allowing us to do this video and take part in the channel. Let's get right into it. Cool. Thanks for, for meeting with me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I'm out here at Green Harley Davidson. We're getting ready to start working on the build for the, the Jade Shadow. And I want to introduce Mike. Can you tell them a little bit about yourself? Yeah, uh, my name is Michael Ray. I'm the parts and service manager here at Green Harley Davidson. I've uh, worked with the family for 10 plus years. I've uh, been riding my entire life and have a huge passion for hot rod Harleys. Perfect. And Joel? Uh, I've been working here for about almost three years and I really like building motors, so this will be right up my alley, I suppose. Perfect. 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 Okay, so. What we have, we have a one third, I'm sorry, a, a 2021 Road King Special right now. Um, I have on it, um, of course, the 114, and I have the Vance and Hines high output twin exhaust, dual exhaust on it right now, and um, a um, heavy breather on there. So that's what we're starting with. Uh, so I guess the best thing to do is to start out with, with the goals. I, I want to squeeze out as much horsepower as I can. Um, 131 plus, if you guys have another idea. Um, and I've gotten a foundation of ideas from other YouTubers. Um, but what's in YouTube and what's in reality aren't always the same thing. So I need you guys to kind of guide me. We'll plan it out and then we'll get all the work done and go from there. Nice. Okay. Um, we're starting with, uh, so I guess the best thing to do is to start out with, with the goals. I, I want to squeeze out as much horsepower as I can. Um, 131 plus, if you guys have another idea. Um, and I've gotten a foundation of ideas from other YouTubers. Um, 
but what's in YouTube and what's in reality aren't always the same thing. So I need you guys to kind of guide me. We'll plan it out, and then we'll get all the work done and go from there. Okay. Um, first thing is, just before we dive into the engine, the exhaust that I have on it. Um, I have heard that some of the Vanton Hines exhaust um, actually reduce horsepower as opposed to adding a little bit. So what I was considering was changing that again, the exhaust again, and going to a Bassani Road Rage high horsepower two into one mm -hmm. and switching the saddlebag with the cutout on the clutch side over to just they they have a uh, solid saddlebag, so I only have a cutout on the single side. Yep. Is that something practical to do? Will I see any benefits from doing that? Do you think? Yeah, I think a good two into one exhaust helps with like just helps it flow a lot better. Helps with back pressure as well. So okay. Yeah, we've um, we've really seen, especially with the baggers, uh, putting on two into ones, uh, the Sony D and D. They really are kind of like the industry standards for getting maximum performance and power. The uh, the big thing is uh, your header length. Like a lot of guys put a like a true dual system on. Well, front header is twice as long as the rear, or vice versa. By the time they bend and do everything, so the two into one allows for just tremendous power over stock or a true dual system. Okay. So and even with uh, a Bassani, I mean, they make a dummy pipe, a ghost pipe, right. as it's called. Uh, so that way you can keep your bags uh, aesthetically, everything looks like it's supposed to be, uh, but the engine definitely, you know, it's all two into one. It's just more just there for the optic side. So that's really personal. Uh, we we do more of the ghost pipe installation uh, than we do purchasing a whole nother saddlebag and yep. just having a true two into one with the one cutout. So cool. at the end of the day, that comes down to what you look at yeah. and go, man, I like Perfect. that. Perfect. It's just all for yep. visual. Okay, excellent. Yeah. Okay, so I'm seeing kits out there, 143, 153 from all these different places that I haven't heard of, but maybe one or two people talk about. So my goal is to squeeze out horsepower. I really would like to see a minimum of 160 horsepower out of it, but I don't want to go with anything that's, we're not sure of the reliability on. Mm -hmm. So um, performance is number one priority. Close second is reliability. Um, warranty is, is not a concern. So um, as long as your experience tells you that this part and these things that we're gonna put together are gonna give us the reliability. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I don't want 300 horsepower and I can only drive it two times and then right. I have to put a new motor in it, so, okay? Yeah. So right now, here's what, what I have. I have the, the proposed build is going to be the 131 engine kit. Mm -hmm. um, going with a uh, fueling cam plate, the racing cam plate, mm -hmm. and oil pump. Uh, going with T-Man pistons for compression. Mm -hmm. Let's see here, throwing on an oil fan cooler. A concern of mine is what to do with the clutch because I, I feel, and I don't know, I don't have the experience, and this is my, my third Harley, and I haven't gone this far, but I feel like the clutch is going to need an upgrade. Mm -hmm. I don't know if the Harley Davidson um, upgraded clutch is what we want to do if we want to go even further. Barnett makes some good options. Yeah, with that yeah if you're going to really try and yep. put some bigger power in there than what Harley just has in the catalog for you know true plug and play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're gonna wanna do, it's definitely with the clutch. Uh, even then, um, I would recommend like a billet compensator or even a comp eliminator uh, because the compensator sprocket up on the engine side, that's gonna be for everything we beef up in the clutch, that's gonna become the weakest link in that primary drive. So if we're gonna do the clutch, we definitely wanna upgrade the compensator, uh, the compensator yeah, and all that. That's a good idea too. Yeah, that's like the uh, like start performance. Yeah, yeah. yeah that build compensator, that absolutely, okay. that's a good idea. Um, Psychorama cam kit, because they make the, the higher performance cam to go with the 131. Um, are you familiar with what? I don't know, I'm talking about. I haven't heard of them. Um, you, you used T-Man a minute ago? Yeah. 
Um, if we were going to do something with them, I would almost, if I didn't, uh, and didn't give a, a plug for them or Star Performance, I would go with a T-Man cam. They make their own cam grinds. A lot of their cams are set up for you know their piston, their compression ratios. Uh, so if we were gonna go with a custom piston from them, I would, I would for just use a user preference, I would put their cam in there or um, like and not knocking uh, not other companies, but a lot of them are internet fan favorites. Um, right. I like being able to pick up the phone and going, hey. Michael, hey Joel, this is what's going on, and that's where like T Man. I, I know we've we've worked with them in the past on some of their kits, their 128, 131 kits, and they're awesome. Okay. I mean, and just their products alone are right up there with some of the finest in the world. Okay. Um, so then we'll take a look at that um, as the cam. The well, and also, sorry, I think Star Racing has their three quarter. Yeah, it's for yeah. They put one thirty ones as well. So. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Star Performance, they um, they make a really nice cam, and all your cams are gonna be the the lift and duration. They're all gonna be really close. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just kind of some of the the finer pieces yeah. you can yeah. kind of get a cam that's not right, and it just you start running into tuning issues. This is the the Cyclorama one, and they have just this wide flat area um on it it's not nearly as sharp as your typical cam that's that's what i'm hearing it is good to on there but yeah, the duration on it, yeah. with that being said what are you seeing with the the t-man cams as far as power you're building it like what we're talking about what do you th where do you think we're going to be what range uh I don't know, throwing out numbers is, is tough because we can go, there's three dynos within 50 miles of the shop. Mm -hmm. I can take a stock bike out there, and I mean stock, stock as it came off the crate, and every dyno is gonna be five horsepower difference. Right. So, um, I mean, realistically, I know Harley advertises 120 to 130 out of their 131 kits. If you put a upgrade, you go to a 64 millimeter throttle body and you put big injectors and you put a big air cleaner kit and you put your three quarter, like a more race cam. I mean, I don't see any reason why with a good exhaust, you're not going to be in the 140s. I mean, I, I, 150 would be a, a stout number to throw at it. Um, you know, it, it just, it gets tough on, you know, that side of the world. Yeah, a lot of those guys who are doing like the 160 plus horsepower kits are doing like flywheels and deleting yeah. the balancer and they're getting like... They're putting big, yeah. big numbers up, but yeah. they're taking a lot of the reliability and runability out of it, where okay. it's got such a radical cam in it that you can't ride it to the end of the street because yeah. uh, mm -hmm. it's got to be run wide open. It, it's It's got such a high lift cam that... At 2,500 RPM, it stumbles all over itself. So, yeah, this is still going to be my daily driver. So, yeah, so that's where I mean, it's like the um, the cycle Rama cam. Looking at the lift and duration, finding something similar. Uh, we we sell a lot of the, the Star Performance product, like their 3030 cam is a bolt-in cam for your Milwaukee 8 114s. Uh, their three-quarter cam is like Joel said, that's really set up for your 131s, your more high output engines. Um, and it just boils down to, you know, I get, like you said, you gotta have something that you can ride every day. Right. So that's where it gets, um, if we're for some rideability, I mean, 140 number would be a fair number to be able to throw out there and make it where it's good. You can put good gas in it. You don't have to run uh, octane booster all the time. Uh, that's right. what I, I think a lot of people, they go, oh man, it's got good, you know, man, it thinks make big horsepower. Well, they forgot to tell you it's got VP 110 in it. Yeah, you need jet fuel. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's like, oh, yeah, and the dyno sheet. Well, man, I can, my wife does Photoshop. What do you need? How much horsepower do you need? You know, you know, they forget to tell you about all the anomalies that they're, you know, it's 30 degrees or that yeah. corrected altitude is 500 feet below sea level. So it, it gets into into some fun, the fun side of splitting hairs on dyno sheets. That's where it comes down to see the paint. Like, oh, you always ask customers when they're wanting to build a motor. What's your expectations out of it? <clears throat> Where are you riding it? And how much do you want to spend? Mm -hmm. Because those three questions are really going to tell us budget, I can't go crazy. I need to just do a nice stage four kit. 
I'm going to go to Colorado. My best friend lives in Laconia and we're going to do four corners. Okay, cool. You know, now we need to look at what tuning system we're going to put in there. Uh, because like we always tell a lot of customers, if you break down in the middle of nowhere, South Dakota and the one Harley dealer there, they don't do power vision. Well, now you got a guy that can't even diagnose anything because the ECN, he, he's looking for mechanical. So, right. you know, it's, it definitely gets into it. Yeah. You know, and again, expectations, you know, guys, man, I, I just want a ripper. I just want to have fun. Well, cool. Let's put a big hot rod cam in it and go out there and clear okay. up the streets. Yeah, Dark Horse uh, with their flywheels and stuff like that, they make a lot of good, you know, like you can call them and tell them exactly what you're wanting and what you expect out of the bike as well. So they can kind of customize more or less a flywheel with a stroke and all that good stuff for you as well. Okay. Um, I'm thinking realistically budget um, over the, the course of the entire thing, and, and we may do it in, in two stages, but anywhere from six to eight grand, somewhere in there. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. so that if we need to go further, let me know, but I thought that would be a healthy expectation as far as, as a budget. Um, I am going to be in a few years moving to Colorado, so I'm going to have to deal with a higher altitude, but... Realistically, in four years, I've bought four Harleys, um, three for me, one for another person. So I tend to go through them, and I'm probably going to add a second Harley to the stable later yeah. this year when the Icon series comes out, depending nice. on what they release. Yep. So I, I don't know how long I'm going to keep this one, um, but if I keep it, it's going to have to perform in high altitude at some point in the future. So that's cool. something to keep in mind. Um, and I, going back to, to the cam, I, I did like the idea of what you said about the, if we're going with the pistons, cams that are made to work with those pistons might be a good idea. So, um, I'm going to rely on you guys to kind of decide what you think is going to be the best f from that end. Um, What am I not thinking of that I need to think of? The compensator was, was one. I, I yep. didn't think anything of so that. So the compensator, so. Um, we've seen a few of them come in, like the 131s. Well, yeah, just specifically 131s. I think I've seen uh, three broken compensators. I had one um, that I had found, and I was, what was I doing? I was taking this primary part, and I just found a hairline crack in it. You know what I mean? So like, I, I found them anywhere from like locking the motor up just because that compensator eventually breaks or yeah. to even that. So the billet compensator is good. They have, uh, again, Dark Horse, they make a, uh, they make a compensator as well. And there's okay. a serviceable, there's actually kind of cool um, the way they make theirs. But, uh, and then have you looked at intakes or anything like that or uh, uh, HPI, horsepower ink? Um, they also make good intakes for Harley Davidson and stuff like that too. It's nice um, billet, aluminum. Okay. Yeah. No, no, I haven't. Okay. So let's see. Yeah, that, that would be uh, that would definitely be one of the good places to to look at because that's where a lot of times with uh, like the little things in building a motor, like the comp, doing the clutch, doing the throttle bodies, like the hundred pennies makes a dollar cliches. That's where like the reliability and a few more mm -hmm. extra horsepower comes in. Um, one thing that you mentioned earlier is like putting a fueling cam plate and oil pump in it. Uh, we've experienced this. Uh, Harley Davidson allows for so much run out on the flywheel. Right. Um, we as Harley sell a Screaming Eagle billet cam plate and oil pump that allows for a lot more run out than the fueling and SNS. Mm -hmm. We I think fueling only allows up to four thousand four thousand yeah. run out. Yeah. yeah I'm not knocking our product, but I bet half the flywheels on my showroom floor are over four thousands run out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we had one two weeks ago, twenty twenty one or twenty twenty road glide, we pulled the cam cover off the fueling kit wouldn't work. The Harley kit will allow for more run out. So for longevity, user, friend, you know, being able to know that, man, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, I, I would say, I would go in the direction of Screaming Eagle over the fueling. Okay. Uh, you're gonna get same scavenge, same oil pressure, <coughs> everything that you're buying the fueling for, you're gonna get out of Screaming Eagle. And then there's a few others that go with it, so. And it's a nice billet oil pump and camp plate as well. Okay. So, yeah. yeah. Okay, let's let's put that down. They're uh yeah the the oil pumps on I believe on the fueling and SNS they they just have a lot tighter tolerances I want to say that's why they're calling for you know less they want less run out on the on the pinion shaft on there so like SNS is SNS is five thousand <coughs> or so on 
sometimes you'll see that. I'm a walkie ace. I've seen them, you know, 2,000 strung out. A uh, majority of them I've seen with a lot higher run off than that. So it's just, okay. you don't want to get it down there. You already have this expensive feeling set up. And then not knocking feeling, feeling's a good part and good brand, but then you're just kind of stuck. You're like, ah, I can't put this on because the run outs. And they sell race. I mean, they're they're in the performance business, so a lot of their yeah. stuff is designed for a guy that's building a race motor that yeah. is blueprint true. Yep. Yeah. Where not that Harley doesn't sell that, but they're selling it for the guys that bolted in, <coughs> get caught in the rain, get caught in the snow, and they just want to get back and get it figured out. So that's where yeah. being able to use some of the the Harley yeah. stuff for longevity and overall just abuse out of it, it can be set up a little bit more in your favor than mm -hmm. the per true performance part. So, um, you know, we can definitely build uh, build an estimate from the throttle body, I mean, air cleaner, throttle body injectors, you know, with the stage four kit from Harley, you're already gonna get your piston, like the heads and everything. So there's some stuff that we'll essentially box up and throw away or make into ashtrays. You know, we change out the pistons and put a different cam in it. <coughs> Excuse me, I have allergies and it's like I got this itch. I apologize. Oh, Sorry. no, you're all yeah. right. But I think um, doing all that, I would, like I said, and even with Joel, and I'd even reach out to uh, George Bryce at Star Performance because I'd like to see um, what custom piston he he offers oh, yeah, that's for a 131 does, because he's yeah. got a good agreement with some other piston manufacturers and mm -hmm. about, you know, hey, man, with my three-quarter cam, with this bore and stroke, from a 131, what can we sell? Um, yeah, cause I've gone through horror stories in the day of like build, oh, we're gonna do a 103 and we're gonna put high compression pistons in it and we're gonna put a big lift cam in it and man, it just detonates to hell. And mm -hmm. we spend days on the dyno to go, well, y'all put the wrong cam in it. Wow. Or the piston, that's just, it makes too much compression. We gotta, gotta stack the head gasket or change a piston. So that's where kind of, getting a little bit of uh, input from some of these piston and cam guys, they can make it where, oh yeah, it's an awesome setup and we're getting this out of it. It likes to run at this, you know, this RPM and go from there. And, and then little things um, like SNS makes the lifter. Oh yeah, the anti-rotation. The, box, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, we'll look at doing like SNS rocker arms. Mm -hmm. um, you know, make sure that again, like all the little things that right. nobody thinks about until you turn it to 6,000 RPM and yeah. bounce it off the rev limiter a couple times and go, oh man, forgot about that. Okay. Yeah. yeah Riding wise, um, I put on about, you know, especially over the summer, maybe three, 4,000 miles a month. So I can put some serious miles on. I do ride in the rain and the cold, um, so reliability is in those environments is going to be going to be real important. I don't know if, if that's important information for you to know, um, both for work and for a lot of pleasure riding as well. So, uh, what else? Oh, there is another YouTuber that is just crazy about if you. Do anything to upgrade from a 114, you gotta convert it to a chain drive. Is that realistic? Because nobody else is saying that. Is that um, something that, that has to happen? So because... it's all about it. So it's about your powertrain efficiency. Um, I guess more or less my understanding of it is so from a belt drive, you have more parasitic loss of your horsepower to your rear wheel from your motor. What and he's saying is that it'll rip up the belt and then freeze up your engine and that you need a chain to handle all the horsepower and torque is what he's saying and nobody else is saying that i would say that that is user preference yeah um okay. there's their kevlar belts they're very <laughs> i've seen i mean very strong yeah the tires are so hard compound you're going to spin the tire now if you were if we were building a drag drag race application and you were like, hey, Michael, I want to go run this Hogs Gone Wild Tour and I'm going to enter my bike in the Pro Street class, yeah. Yeah. man, let's put a chain on it because we're on a track that's as tacky as a fly trap. But out here on the street with the Dunlop tire that's on there, all your road tires, yeah. you're just going to smoke the tire before you really have to worry about that. And then from a maintenance standpoint, yeah. you don't want to deal with a ch change or noisy they're always slinging grease everywhere. Yeah, From a safety yeah. standpoint, you kick that chain off and that chain knocks the inner, I mean, there's a list of pros and cons that are both equal distance from the top. 
yeah. that are going to give you, yeah, all about the chain, all about the belt. Right. If I was building one, I wouldn't put a chain on it for nothing. Okay. That answers that yeah. question. If you were popping wheelies and going drag racing, put a chain on it. Yeah. No but, wheelies, no drag racing. But for riding like the postman, rain, sleet, snow, up the mountain, mm -hmm. down the mountain, leave a chain on it. Yeah. Or the um, belt, excuse me. I, I want something that's incredibly fun. That in the rare cases, I just want to open it up. I can, but I am a very conservative writer. Ninety six percent of the time, yeah. and and that's that's I don't don't do willies. I don't do creepy stuff. So, cool. What else am I not thinking of? I mean, I think we've um, you know because we're not going to mess with anything drive wise as far as belt from the transmission right. back. Um, the transmission's going to be fine. I, you're not. I mean, there's again, there's point you in the direction of four or five guys that make big power with stock transmissions and have no issues with them. A lot okay. of it comes down to right clutch, compensator, keep the primary and everything happy. Um, we might look at putting in an actual manual solid state, like a primary chain adjuster and getting rid of the ratchet style. Um, mm -hmm. But I mean, that's, I think we've, we've addressed that with the primary injectors, cams. No, I mean, I think. Um, other than drag bars and a seat to keep your butt in it, you know, if you wanted one of the new uh, Road Glide ST or Street Glide ST style seats, mm -hmm. uh, that might be the only thing. Okay. But no, I, I mean, it would be yeah. a pretty, pretty tried and true setup. Okay. You know, the, the heads are going to flow good. We're going to look at some rocker arms again to, for just. Yeah, they have all those. You can put the studs and powders. Yeah. The rocker arms, all that stuff. Yeah. Just little things to help for longevity out of it. Okay. Um, with that, the, and I know if this is a crystal ball thing, but if if we do it the right way, how am I am I going to see any decreased life of the motor? I only want to say yes because you're going to enjoy it more. Okay, you'll you'll you will be you'll catch yourself running it a little bit harder, but I mean, no, on the on the same hand, as long as you're doing your maintenance. You're not abusing it. No, I mean, you're, you're gonna have no issue. I mean, we've, back 15 years ago when we were taking 88s and making them 103s, there's bikes that are still out there with 40, 50,000 miles on them with the same high compression pistons and Screaming Eagle 211s and the D and D fat cats. They're just out there ripping around and doing oil changes. Awesome. Um, I have, but I have not hooked it up yet, the uh, Harley Pro Street tuner um because i've done the exhaust and, and the uh, air filter i'm assuming we're not going to need that for this build um because we're going to dyno it correct right. yeah we'd have to go with uh with, put the power vision yeah okay. and dyna jet um put a base map in there we'll let you go put 500 miles on it break the engine in good let the rings and everything get seated we'd bring it back we would take it put it on the lift, make sure everything's right. And then from there, we take it up and go put it on the dyno and then do a dyno tune on it. From there, bring it back. We do an oil change, drop all the fluids, brag about how much horsepower it makes and see you in 5,000 miles. Okay. Okay. Um, trying to think of what else, what other questions? Cause I had a whole bunch of my head walking in. Yeah. <laughs> and now they're, <laughs> Cool. And with that, um, we sell them. There's everybody's got horsepower or horsepower, excuse me, uh, fuel additives. Mm -hmm. um, I recommend VP. They're additive fuel additives. They have an octane booster. I've, anytime you start putting some more compression in them, especially down here in South Texas, you it's hot during the summer. You may run into a, a pinging here and there. Um, now that QTs is around with ethanol free fuel, we really steer people in that direction, but it might be something during the summer months, or if you go up to Colorado for a trip to four corners, man, you carry a little octane booster with you because the further off the beaten path you get, the worse the quality of gasoline gets. Yeah. So having that in your saddlebag to be able to put five or six gallons of mom and pop's shell station fuel out on highway 87 in the middle of nowhere couple drops of octane booster in there to make sure the fuel's stable that way you're not running any issues you know definitely recommend that for you okay awesome um all the parts that we're talking about are anything on there that you know off the top of your head that we're going to experience any big delays with 
Reality of the COVID years. <laughs> um, I don't think so. Uh, I ordered a 131 kit. It took about 65 days to get, which is right. Um, we keep up with all these different companies on their social media channels. So, you know, they're advertising, hey, we got this in stock, we got that in stock, it's riding season. So it shouldn't be any, any real issue, you know. I'd say 90 days, probably term-wise, of when we pull the trigger to get everything ordered to when it gets here to get to work yeah, on we it. We had that. Well, we had that one with the Barnett. We I feel like we got that fairly quickly. Mm -hmm. That one. So. And with yours being Milwaukee Eight stuff, that's all brand new. You know, everybody's producing that faster than they're producing twin cam or yep. you know late model. You know, high output one hundred three stuff. So it'll be, I'd say, fairly e easier than. Rebuild. If you had an '87 that you were trying to rebuild, we were we were on a way smoother path with this okay. than we would yeah. be that. So the plan would be to get everything purchased and ordered, and roughly 90 days bring the bike in. And why don't you get it? I'm assuming it's what three or four days. Yeah, probably about three days. Yeah, that's fair enough. Yeah, and we'd have everything laid out just on the lift, so that way as soon as Joel gets it, it's old stuff off new stuff on you know well, obviously we have to fit rings and okay. yep. make sure all of our clearances are right so while everything on paper just bolts up joel okay. will be back there measuring anything and yep. cool when you give me the estimate if you could put in <coughs> any of those little odds and ends that always tend to come up mm -hmm. could, even, so that if we don't need them great but if sure if we need those um how many miles do you have on right now uh coming up on two thousand right 2000. now okay so. Um, I guess that's that's pretty much about it. Yeah. I'm looking at um, April 3rd, April 4th. I have a big bonus coming in. I'm going to buy everything at, at that point. So we're what, about two weeks away, a week and a half cool. away. Cool. Um, how long do you think it'll take to write me up an estimate with everything? Um, if not by the end of this week, uh, this I'd say Tuesday or Wednesday next week. I mean, at least Perfect. by the 1st. Okay. Um, and even one thing that just to kind of look at it, I, I would, I would price a HPI exhaust. Oh yeah. yeah. They make a really, yeah. really beautiful, two into fully one. stainless yeah. two into one. Um, want to stay all black. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's, yeah. That's, they, and, and, that, I was going to say thing. I could look in, at their pipe and, and even get a powder coat. I've got an awesome powder coat here in town. Uh, that's and awesome. just looking at numbers, you know, if their pipes making 10 more horsepower. Oh or, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's something to do. And they may have a special. I mean, that's the thing with some of these vendors this time of the year. You know, we'll look and see, you know, all okay. avenues. But, um, That'll be cool. Yeah, HPI, they're, they're really coming on strong and, and from the throttle body and the, the header side of the world and some of their other components. That that would be really cool. Yeah, that, you know, you can, if we can get 10 horsepower out of it, that's, that's definitely awesome. How much ballpark does it take to powder coat an exhaust? Probably looking three hundred bucks, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm definitely thinking I'm going to do the two into one, and just because that off balance look is, I like it. Okay, cool. Um, give it a little bit more unique, especially if most of what you're doing is dummy pipes and yeah, set me apart even more. Yeah, that's and that's what I was going to say with their exhaust. Like you know, that's especially down here. You know, we don't see there's only a handful of bikes and maybe only two or three that I can really think of. That have the HPI yeah, stuff right. on it. Yeah. I, mean, I don't even know that I've seen one yet. Yeah. So. And it's. Yeah. They make really nice stuff. And again, powder coat and what you want to do with just a single bag, it'd be really nice. I'd have to. Um, with the snake venom, that would be a little bit of a challenge to find the extended bag that's not cut out for the two into one. Oh, I'm, I'm a uh, Deadwood Green. Oh, Deadwood Green. I thought you were the snake venom. <laughs> no, Deadwood Green. Okay. So I'm trying Lossy. to think. What's going to be Hogwarts? Hogwarts. Okay, yeah. that's what I was going to say. Because I, I was trying to think who um, we had another customer. He has the uh, Midnight Crimson, and he ordered a set of extended bags. Yeah, I, I'm only. Uh, I've gotten some. Here, I'll show you. This is kind of hard to see, but this I got these from Hogwarts. <clears throat> it's an LED. Uh, bright light right built in there. Okay. Oh, that's okay. Um, and it's got amber and white and because the Memphis shades fairing I put on blocks these guys 
So the stock ones. Yep. So I was very impressed with that. So I looked at them for the bags and they look to be of extremely good quality and they're, they're identical to the Harley ones. So I'd have a spare one on the brake side with the cutout in it and I'd replace the clutch one with the, the full drop. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, I'm sorry. I, th I, th I thought yours was a snake, uh, the snake venom. Yeah. So. <coughs> awesome. Well, cool. It'd be a cool build, and I mean, Absolutely. definitely with um, you know doing some of the internals. You know, if you pull up anywhere and they go, man, that's a crazy 131. Like, oh, yeah. Don't worry about it. <laughs> so watch my YouTube channel because yeah. I mean, it's the 131 kits. I mean, we, we I literally have our parts guy Chuck Abbey. We did the 131 crate motor. Joel did it like right around Christmas time. Man, he did 1,500 miles to Virginia. Uh, he left Sunday morning at 4 a.m. And he's going to do another 1,500 back. And uh, it doesn't take too much with a calculator to do 1,500 miles in 24 hours to figure out how much distance he covered. Yeah. And how fast he was covering it. And, I mean, they're, they're great motors, man. They're set up nice. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, I put this breather on it but i'm thinking about going to that extreme cone the big cone yep is there gonna is there a difference in performance or horsepower between these and i have the big cone on the fat bob on your showroom is the one i traded in that guy over there and it, i loved it on there it just it blocked my leg a lot yeah so but i set on a street light out here with the small cone on it and it didn't block my feet at all so so with the big cone um my but he works at Central Texas, and they have a dyno up there, and he says there is a noticeable dyno difference with that big cone on there. It, even though it's not as aesthetically pleasing, but there is a big horsepower difference, okay. or a decent enough horsepower difference to then notice the feet okay. on there. So, yeah, this summer I'm planning on buying another bike. It might be an Icon. Um, I've also thought about doing a um, Fat Bob and having it painted just bright pink and, and with pig graphics all over call it oh, war yeah. pig and do a 131 yeah. on it with, a, with cool. a big old cone on Absolutely. it yeah. so so this we're gonna do more than just this one build um i just love doing this stuff so yeah yeah, yeah that's good um but yeah i that fat bob i was i just put on high output mass and hinds on it and and the uh big comb breather mm -hmm. and uh auto tuner um Harley auto tuner on it and Man, that thing just flies. That was so good on there. So I, I, I put that on just because I didn't want my leg to be pushed out off of a floorboard. But after sitting on the uh, street light out here with the small cone on it, mm -hmm. which the actual bend in it is the same. It's just the cone is primarily the difference. Yeah, It's not pushing my feet out. So I'm thinking I'm going to throw the, a big cone on here. And then save this for the war pig maybe. Or whatever I end up getting. There you cool. go. <laughs> that would be cool. Yeah. Sweet. Um, am I, is there any questions I'm not asking that I should be? No, I, I, I really can't think of anything. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, covered all of it. Well, I appreciate it, guys. Thank you. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Absolutely. You nice meeting you. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, look forward to it. It'll be a lot of fun. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Again, thank you to Michael and the team for making this video happen and giving us this information to share. And if you're looking for a good contact over at Green Harley Davidson, this guy here, Jay Pettit, is my salesperson and he is amazing. His number is listed here on the screen. Hit him up if you're in the area.